<laughs> the nod means are you doing it already? There we go. Okay. Okay. So um, all right. Well, it's lovely to have you here, and I um, I will just sort of talk about the resources. Thirteen pieces and uh, how it is laid out. You've probably been to the Mensa site, which is actually showing on the screen now, where it's laid out, and the thirteen pieces are listed there with um, the kind of what notes are in the easy desk camp part. So they've all got an easy desk camp part. And they're kind of in the order of, I think, difficulty of that easy part, or how many notes. Um, and then it's also got a list of all the other instruments that are available to play along with. So the, the one that's, there's a couple that have only got two desk camps, and it's only got three. Um, but the others, a few others like the uh, tenor and bass. And backing tracks. You can actually, as you may have noticed already, have the um, a book, a key recorder book that's got all of the pieces in. It's quite a massive one, um, but it hasn't got any piano parts or scores because it's already massive having all of the uh, just the discant alto tenor bass parts. Um, but some people I thought might have liked just a recorder music book, and um, then a separate book. So if you had that one, then I kind of really hope that you'll have the teaching notes as well to go with it, the other little booklet. The, um, which is this one, I oh, know that's, oh, hang on. So the booklet um, is, maybe it should just be not to be wild to open. I mean, she, it doesn't matter. Um, and in the, then down here, uh, each piece under the YouTube playlist has got its own booklet for that song. And I think these are probably more useful because, uh, for instance, here's the first one, uh, it, because it's got the teaching note for that one in with it, and it's got all the parts, plus it's also got the piano part and the score at the back. So um, it's kind of a tidy unit for each piece. So, um, so I think that that's probably useful. And the main other thing for this web page is to realize that each song is not just a video, it's a playlist. So, for instance, if you click on this button here, which you might not have seen that, wait, wrong button. Um, the second two, so what I pressed on was not the dots, but those lines just in the top uh, right hand corner the lines and that brings up the playlist and then you can choose which version of the video you want to watch. So that's quite important. So the first one here has got the score. Um, the second one has got the discount one at full speed and the second one's got the discount one with just the backing. So you you know uh, if that probably makes sense. Um, so I think there's 13 pieces and um, I think it's probably a good idea to play a snippet of some and talk about the key points of the, the particular pieces um, and also when we get to 8-bit teach how to teach the decoding from the binary coding so the other things probably worth covering in this session um, but if there's anything else or just sing out because <laughs> um, I won't just play through them all because I know you can just do that on the website anyway so the first one is there because it's only got three notes in it. Um, I'll bring up the score version. Uh, yep, which is the first one. The main actually are uh, I will flick to the discount one because, um, yeah, here we go. Discount one. This is the slow version. Oh, sorry, I just jumped by accident. So, um, this one is designed that uh, the rhythms. You might think some of the rhythms in there are quite tricky for beginner recorders, but I think that uh, when you've got a demo, it, it the, just the listening skills make it a lot um, more e easy than if there weren't wasn't the demo there. 
and then it also um, exposes students to kind of a lot more fun rhythms that I think are innately not hard for students. I think they are hard for um, sometimes for teachers to look at the music and teach, but they're not hard for the student and they're not hard for the demo. So that that's was kind of what I was thinking. And also I think it can be quite freeing and exciting for students to do some different rhythms. So that's part of what was behind there. The, the first one, um, it's only got the BG, BAG as the notes for the easy part. And uh, as you'd read in the teaching notes, which I'll just bring up. I, I keep all my PDFs in um, four score. Uh, so which means that I can have a nice set list here. But anyway, so you can kind of see that, um, oops, the theme that the limpet, limpet and barnacle rock. So the kind of words of the title are the rhythm. Um, and then the main tricky thing, I mean, I tested it with students. I thought, well, how do I do the rock? When I told students that the words are limpet and barnacle, rock they just wanted to go limp it and barnacle rock so i thought well blood i will syncopate the first bar because that's how they like to say it but the second one limp it and barnacle rock so it kind of um i think hopefully sits in terms of a rhythm um and um then the middle section is just mainly all a's uh and so what it is is play on the word rock because I don't know, one of my favourite things is just taking kids to uh, Sumner and the cave rock there and crawling around on the rocks and looking at things. And so it's kind of, to me, it has that feeling of, of looking around. And actually, I heard it um, a one class. They've really got into it and they're actually playing the song and they're actually standing up and kind of going sideways like crabs while they play it. <laughs> so you never know what, what comes out of the imagination of students um, and music. Um, this one hasn't got a tenor part, but the tenor can play the, the melody which is you know fine um whoops well this is a teaching note one i should actually bring up the limpet and barnacle rock booklets this is limpet and barnacle rock booklet which is just has the teaching notes and um and the parts separate so it's nice and and easy um the desk can too you're just teaching c and the c sharp I think for advanced students, it's nice having an, an advanced part like that that they can hear and you know feel really cool about playing. Um, and if you don't have it, it doesn't matter either. So <laughs> um, yeah, it's all pretty straightforward, really. Um, no questions about that one. It's pretty... Just say, or you can either save your questions for the end, or you can type them in, in the chat, or you know. Um, but otherwise I'll move through. Uh, the one thing I do want to make sure is clear is that I've got dynamics all the way through, but sometimes, especially with students and especially with cheap recorders, sometimes if you try and play a dynamic, it puts the recorder completely out of tune. Um, so go for the recorders being in tune over the dynamics. They're kind of an indication, and um, I think it's nice having a feeling this is a, this is a loud piece or this is a soft piece. It does impact the way you play it, I think. Um, but recorders haven't got the dynamic range that other instruments have got. But I still kept the dynamics in there anyway um, because it's it's good. I think it's good to have them. <laughs> um, and I've also uh, apologised that I flick between calling the treble. Um, or alto recorder I flip between the two because it's just I always kind of do discant we can't tend to call the discant recorders discants here but they can be they're also called soprano um it's supposed to be a soprano alto tenor and bass or discant treble but um in New Zealand we are pretty good at using different countries um terminology aren't we so I just rolled with that <laughs> um so the breezes road walls um in three time so it's, i've tried to have different things in each one for learning so obviously this one is the only piece that's in three time uh so a waltz you could talk about waltzes and things like that and to me it was um it reminded me of kind of like waltz and sort of flowers in the breeze and things like that so that's why i named it breezes road waltz because of the breeze and because that's where i've been teaching recorder for the last 20 plus years on the school on Breezes Road. Um, but it has got a 
um, contrasting section in it. Uh, for those that we don't hear, let's put back to here um, to hear a little bit of this one. So the middle section, this the second section, uh, has got um, um, is about alternating the fingering between the, those two notes. It's it's sort of like an exercise, but it's also a pretty piece at the same time. Ooh. You know, so it's a good sort of fingering thing, but pretty. And then the third section is um, I can go through it again. It's sort of got those little uh, staccato. Three sections, um, and you can see the top part, the disc count one has just got repeated notes, whereas the others have got uh, harmonies, and the most advanced one's just got some Fs, which is what makes it harder, actual low Fs. Um, but the main things about uh, that, that the Breezes Road walls. Um, yeah, so I'll move on to the next one now, the, which is the Transalpine Blues. Oh yeah, this one uh, is, there's two in there that are based on the 12 bar blues and that's because I think it's really good for all students to um, have a playing involvement, you know, kind of hands-on uh, experience of playing 12 bar blues structure. Um, and this is an easy way to engage in that using a quarter and there's two. So there's Transalpine Blues, which is a major blues and uh, easy go easy blues which is a minor blues the other the reason other reasons i've got them in this is for teaching jazz feel swing feel and also for giving the opportunity for improvisation in a jazz feel so um you don't always get that for a quarter so uh that's that's what's the benefit of this these ones are um and um the parts you can kind of see what the teaching goals are are in that one. The E to F sharp, I call it the seesaw, is about teaching the seesaw fingering E to F sharp, where you hold that that middle finger down. So it's giving heaps and heaps of practice to doing that and trying to play kind of that kind of rhythm. But it does change to a straight rhythm, so it keeps them hearing and and changes tempo. And it's just the same way that trains change tempo, I guess, when they're going up or downhill. Um, the second part, the learning uh, part for that is C sharp to C natural fingering. Uh, and you can also point out the sound of the whistle. Um, so on the music side of it, this is the easy part, which has only got E, F sharp and G. There's um, in the gaps in the B section, you can uh, use these notes down here and um, you know make up solos if you want to because the backing track is very freeing if you use the backing track on its own you can actually make up your own piece all together and improvise all the way through and not even play the transalpine blues so um, feel free to use it as as you would like and what's best for you and the students it works perfectly fine without improvising as well it's just an opportunity to do it that's all um, so playing the beginning of that one so you can get it does start with just the drums whoops Yeah. 
vocal straight rhythm. So you can kind of uh, hear the tempo change and also hopefully feel that you're not swung now, you're straight. And even if you weren't familiar with straight and swung, because you've got the demo here, um, hopefully it makes it quite easy to understand the difference <laughs> um, for teachers and students. Um, and then at the end, it goes to a slow swung again, slower. Um, uh, So it's kind of you know really slow and very swung. Um, in uh, jazz music, when you're doing that swinging, and you've got, obviously got long, short, long, short, two thirds, one third, instead of even quavers. I don't know if you can feel it, but there's a little more weight on the short one. Boom, ba, do, ba, do, ba, do, ba. Not over the top, so it squeaks, but just think of a little bit more weight. Um, that may be hard, but if you know as a teacher that that's kind of part of the feel, then um, uh, you know students, you're about to sort of pass it on. Hopefully they'll hear it and get an understanding of that swing feel. Um, that's mainly about that one. Do you have any questions? I can't see. Any. Oh, have the dynamic scored also provided on due to cover to no? Oh, yes, that's right. Having the dynamics and as a learning opportunity, that's right. Yes. Um, I think there's learning things. I del deliberately try to have learning opportunities in each piece that were different. So um, the, the next one is the, uh, the next blues piece. Um, very, very simple. It's only got B, A, G and E. And it's all about the feel, all about the 12 bar structure and all about improvising. So this one, um, I'll bring up the booklet for that one, Go Easy Blues. Um, you can see, and again, I, I kind of outlined that feel there with those accents written in there. It's just to think of a slight heavier. Um, and then it just goes, it's in unison for the first two times so that you can concentrate on the feel and listening and concentrate on improvising. Then the second half, it breaks into harmony, so it's got that little bit of a kind of a big band feel, is what I was thinking. Um, like like a recorder so that's it um, and then I know that there's lots of notes you could use to improvise but I've just given say for beginners only those notes that they're learning and they can then just play them in any any order they want it's, and concentrate on like you don't need to use lots of notes it's more about how's the rhythmic feel of what you're making up you can make up a really little good little solo in there on two notes. How the recording is, is the first time through the A section, there's some demo solos. The second time it's deliberately blank so that you'll want to fill them in yourself. And the same with the B section, there's some demo solos and then it's deliberately blank. The reason for having demo solos is I'm hoping that it will give some ideas. For, and each of them are deliberately different. Like some of them have got a trill. and So I oh know, or, um, or a... Uh, what else kind of thing? I think they've got some grace note. Yeah. And some rhythms. And hopefully, so if the students listen to that, they go, oh, I could do that in my solo. So it's just giving them some ideas. Or if you want to, you can read them. I think they're in there anyway, notated out for you. Uh, not that one, upper harmony. There we are. There the advanced one's got the demo solos written out, or you can just read them because it's all part of learning. I guess some jazz language by learning them anyway. So um, the whole repeated idea there, you know, kind of thing. So things that you've probably heard before. Um, so and we're in, in D minor. So I mean E minor, D e minor blues. So um, that one, do do do, go easy blues. I guess can't wait. Go to the menu up here. There's a faster version. Oh yeah, full mix. I'll go to the full mix for that. Just for a bit, I'll swish it through fast. It was good having actual jazz musicians play for the backing.
that one. And then later on when it's kind of the Mahamanese, ooh. So you can kind of see it's all about feel. And in a big band, you'd all be wanting to play tight as a section, doing the same articulation. And so you get this chance to do that in this piece. Um, we um, enjoyed recording this, and the band that played it said, oh, can we do a fast version? So normally we do one, and then we do a slow one to practice. So that was kind of like them, uh, they just want to do one. So just it's, it's um, just for fun, really. So it's supposed to be slow, but <laughs> you've got the option. Again, there's also a uh, backing only, so you can do with it as you wish. You use it for when you're performing as a backing track. Um, so yeah, that's the important things about that one. Um, the Gecko Echo next. Just check there's no question to it. No. Echo, echo, go this one. That's uh, early on because the easy part hasn't got many notes. The teaching point in this one is tremolo. Um, so you're learning G to D tremolo, which is just fast between. Um, and of course, that's very good because you want to teach muscle memory of these three fingers going down and covering the hole. So you're sneakily teaching that little aspect in this piece. Um, this uh, gecko echo, honestly the geckos got completely carried away and they just multiplied in this one. Um, it started as a simple idea. Even the first bar has got an echo in it. The second two beats echo the first. It's a very simple little tune. And the B section has just got those staccato stabs, if you like. It's counting rhythms. Uh, so it's a very good one for counting in the middle. Take notice of the articulation in the A section. Um, it's also, uh, you can actually play the A section over the B section if you want to. And you can, um, again, improvise over the B section if you want. How we recorded it was the way I think it works quite well, is we played, Oh, that's, so that's two discant parts, that's two treble ones. We actually played um, the, the discant part, then the discant part with the alto part, because I really like that, and then we brought the whole group in for the rest. But it's a very versatile piece. Um, yeah. Oh yeah, that's how we started. We played it with the discant and the treble echo, because I quite like those two together. Um, and quite an easy piano part, although um, the pianist on the recording, Michael, he, he made up his own version of it, which is cool, and it sounds a bit more gecko-y to me. Uh, so, <laughs> the, let's play the beginning of it, the gecko echoes. <laughs> Kind of the geckos all join in, and it's quite a party of them um, uh, walking around doing their thing at that point. Um, so that's the main things about that gecko one. Just at the beginning of that book, yeah. Um, it's 
quite easy, but fun, that teaches a tremolo. Then we have On a Stroll. On a Stroll is written by Michael. Um, the main thing to watch in this one is the first, the rest <laughs> at the beginning. One. Rest. So if you feel like your students need to practice rests, this is a great piece for that. Um, and it's only got the same as Go Easy Blues, uh, E, G, A and B in the melody. But part two has got a B flat. All right. um, and it also has a flutter tongue in it in part two. So you can see, oh no, it's written the other way around. Never mind. Okay, you can see here that the easy part goes along. Then this part here with the B flats, give that to your advanced group. Um, and then when it comes to this flutter tongue on the B flat, if they can't flutter tongue, just play B flat. It's no biggie. Don't worry about it. You know, just play a normal B flat. Flutter tonguing is going. I found like uh, there's a couple of kids in a class that can do it sometimes. When you know, definitely not all of them. And some recorders are easier than others. You know, I find I have to back off my recorder quite a bit to do it. Um, and my my other recorder that I had was really hard to do it. Just squeaked. So don't panic about it. Just if they can do it, do it. If you want to do it, leave it out, leave it out. So that's why it says optional in there. <laughs> but it's a teaching. Um, it's a, um, we might well put it in there. So, well, one thing, at least we can teach what flutter tanging is, you know. So every piece has got something to teach. Um, and it's quite groovy. I think this has got a slow version as well. Because I found when I tested them on a class, I found that this one needed a slow one to practice because the rhythm, because mainly because of that rest, really. But, yeah. Fast forward back. Yeah, it's just a short little piece, but it's very jolly. <laughs> um, and we'll go to the playlist here. You can see we've got the backing track only. Slow rehearsal version is is very slow. I mean, you can actually listen to these in your own time. But um... so that should help in the learning stages of that one. Um, next, we have Fenua. So the point of this one is to engage um, a lot more learning and around the tangaporu that some schools will have, some and some won't, but even if you don't, you can use the recorder to think and play meaningfully in that style. Um, and also kind of with purpose, kind of thinking about our beautiful land, which is why it's called Fenua. So, um, I like to think that especially students, you know, some students are very um, aware of the environment and land and, and things like that. You know, every student's got things that really, and, and I like to think that there might be some students, if you've got some like that, might particularly enjoy this piece and perhaps they get some to do some of the solos in it. Um, you get to play, there's a little melody that a soloist can play that's written. There's the other techniques that we use in, in this piece are a slide where we're going to slide from E to D, but and also vibrato. So, so it's with the vibrato. Usually start with it straight and then add a little bit in. So you kind of kind of drop it off at the end and drop it off by sliding your finger down.
If you're reading, it sounds a little bit like, um, you know, a, a, a um, another instrument there, like a you know, Peterina or something like that. So, um, or a Koala, kind of playing in that style. Um, you also can play like this by blowing across the. And that's about um, like the importance of air and breath is really significant in a lot of the instruments. And here we'll be thinking about the sea and about the um, wind and things like that. So just, and about just life because of breath. So uh, you can have a group that play that part. You can have a group that play, also taps on the finger holes like this. I call that percussive recorder play. I don't know if you can hear that. Hopefully you can. But if you've got a, quite a few doing that, that should be quite a pattery, pattery sound. Um, yeah, that's that's the main teaching things in here. And because of the um, emphasis of playing um, Tanga Poro in relation to our land, that's why it's got scenes of New Zealand in the background um, to make it meaningful. So, and it's got an amazing mahina. And you're playing all the instruments on it. So there's a the demo version you can still play along with, but it's also got a backing track you can use. And I was about to start, I think. <laughs> oh, sorry. While well, that's going, so it's setting an atmosphere while she plays, but in the sheet music version, there is kind of a score where it's it's written out. So if you've got a reader that wants to play the melody and be the soloist, uh, it is there. You'd probably want to give them that sheet, or you have that sheet. But otherwise, you don't need that. You can just go straight off here because it will. Um, So yeah, I think it's um, 
beautiful but I'd like you to feel free to use it as you wish you might like to take your own photos um, locally your own video footage and make your own backing slideshow or or use this on a big screen um, it's up to you you might want to use it as um, you know in your school production as a soundscape underneath a scene you know so I, I hope that it's really useful in a whole range of ways um, for you not least the, the teaching that's involved in that one um, that's all there is in that one. Then uh, next one, Littleton. Is it Littleton? Oi, 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 Fenua, seven, eight. Oh, yeah. What? Oh, no, it's memory. Sorry, I've got my numberings a bit off. Uh, memories. So the teaching in this one is um, it's just a duet for Descant and uh, alto, recorder, or tenor, or flute. And it's slow and dreamy. Um, it's got a few more notes in, which is why it's further down. It's got some left hand, you know, you can see the notes that are used in the melody. There's a lot of long Gs, and the reason is um, I like the students to think about intonation or playing in tune, and so taking a deep breath and holding the G and listening to the tuning. Um, I've deliberately put all kinds of really interesting harmonies underneath, and uh, if the G's are played in tune, then I think the harmony is really beautiful. It might be the major seventh of a chord or a third. It's not always, it moves away from the key of C. It looks like it's in the key of C, but it moves all over the place. And the melody just kind of flows through. Um, that's the other part there. Now on the recording, well, that's how it looks as a duet. But on the recording, there's also a clarinet and a cello. Uh, but it also works fine with just the two recorders and the piano. And you might want to just play the piano yourself and have it as a duet and it works perfectly fine um, so and memories that one I think it's a really pretty dreamy one um and oh, the, the reason I've got a lot of note names above again that was feedback from teachers and students like we want some note names here and there please so so that in. Um, and I try not to do it too much because hopefully if the note names are in once or twice on the page they can you know that, that's the same note again you know in the next bar and then hopefully they don't need it again it's kind of trying to to um, you know, do that rather than be dependent on the names all the way through. So that's what it's kind of like a hopefully a good compromise with that one. Um, yep. So it's just four versions of that one. Um, I think that's pretty straightforward though. I think. Yep. Uh, can make a comment about the last note. I think it's all right. Um, okay. Our next one, Littleton is um do, 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 do. so this one uh you know is named after our local port and um harbour and harbour and port and is where the you know four ships arrived uh bringing settlers into canterbury from 
um, Scotland and England and places like that, including my great great grandfather. And so, you know, with them, they didn't just come over, they also bought their music, um, which is part of our culture now too. And so this is kind of a sort of a nod to that and it's kind of in the style of a jig, if you like. Um, it's been interesting teaching this one because the melody itself is a little bit tricky and faster. The notes aren't hard, but it's it's because it's fast. And so I did write an easy part, but I found that the beginner students wanted to play the melody, not the easy part. So the way to do that is to, as I've indicated here, teach certain parts of it first. So um, if you've got this up in front of them, you say, well, we want you to play a you know, that when we get there, and we want you to play when we get to there. And so if they play all of those for a start, the Gs, maybe the Bs, uh, you know, the Gs at the end, then uh, that's a good way. And I, I just found that students want to do that. Um, we have got this easy part here. If you do that, you know, it's quite boring. And that's why they'd rather play the other. But it is there, and you might have students that want to play it. Do make sure though that they do keep the notes short, otherwise it will kind of clash with the melody. Whereas these lower parts, um, which are also easy, honestly, if, if you want an easy part, I'd rather that they played the alto part, which is very easy fingering, um, if you've got those recorders, and uh, then, um, then the easy discant. But it's there, just in case you want it. Um, and there's also an advanced alto recorder part and an advanced tenor part and the piano part if you want to just play it. Um, so I'll see, show you what I mean by... It's very short this one, about one minute. <laughs> Right, and then next is teaching that, which again is quite a, it's, um, a little bit tricky, but not that tricky. And it's a nice little goal to try and practice, I think. You know, so, um, and there's enough of repetition of it. It's like you can, one of those cases where you go, well, if you learn, you've got a lot of mileage out of that because it repeats lots of times. Um, and you will hear that the backing's got, a rhythm to take. Basically all there is to that one, um, but the other parts tune in on the second time round, um, the, the tricky ones. So again, that one, well, you know, um, it's available for you <laughs> um, to use, a jo jovial piece. Um, I think that's, anyway, uh, Rock Order number 10 is written by Michael as well, so he contributed to one was this on a stroll and the other one is the rock order here which is a great piece um so the main thing so the desk camp the easy part um you're going to need to teach f for this which is why it's number 10. so the low f obviously it's a bit of a trickier fingering but you know they've got a lot of time to get ready for it which is what i love you've got those rests before you and you can get the fingering ready for the s um and it's just a nice tempo then you've got a beautiful melody uh at letter b which repeats again down here at f and g and then um this section here letter c again michael said don't panic about it it looks hard it's double tonguing and again there's another teaching uh spot if you like uh, for students what is double tanging you know it's going ticker 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 or or tiddler 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 however you want to do it so you're going to go i like going ticker 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 um and if not michael said don't worry just um have a go at it and he doesn't mind if it sounds messy so so you have the composer's permission just to enjoy that bit uh, um, the last bit is oops, tricky in that, well, it's 
you've got to count to come in and that they gaps and if you come in at the wrong time you're on your own because the whole the whole band stops which is really fun there's a lot of fun in this one honestly um and there's also opportunity for solo now in the recording there's a uh, heather does her um soloing at letter d but just in case i i just wrote these myself if you want to do some phrygian dominant soloing which is um the name of that scale there and make up some solos you've got the the scales that are used in that solo section or i just wrote example solos i wrote four of them that you could play in a row if you want to have a good instead of the guitar you want to have a recorder featured in there and really being extended um so that's an option for you um yeah i'm just gonna play a little bit of it and bring it back to do it here What I like about this is the first time um, I taught it, and they didn't know if we just played the E's and the D's, and then they're like, I want to play the F now, I want to play it. You know, they're really, really keen to learn that new note F. So, um, how good is that? Um, Lots of time, a lot of a lot of mileage out of what you learn from here. So, and um, Michael said, you know, is it too repetitive? And it's like it's not actually. When you're actually playing it, and the students are playing it, they're really into it, and they just really enjoy it. And the repetition kind of somehow feels right because, and it's it's okay if they want to do a little mini headbang while they play. You know, it's it's that kind of piece. Um, so just enjoy it. Um, uh, with the next there you go. Wait a bit. If you want, um, so you've got this melody which later on turns into a sweet melody, but it's playing over top of the riff. You can probably hear that. The um, lower recorders, I think, are playing the do 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 rhythm. Um, and if the melody is in fifth. I think it's going to bring this back here to the score. And that you can see that um, it's kind of antiphonal. You've got the descants and basses, and then the others and tenors together. So probably work quite well having them on, on opposite sides if you've got a lot of recorders. But when it gets to the melody here, you'll see that it's in fifth. That is actually a lot below that, and it's kind of funny because it's um it's like the power chords on the guitar if you know so power chords in rock are when you don't have the third played so e they're just playing e's and b's there's no g's naturals or g sharps you don't know if it's major or minor um you kind of can hear a little bit from the context of the whole piece whether it is but uh it's like they're playing their own distortion often picks up those harmonics so it's kind of kind of quite a rock thing and it's also dates right back to what um, you know, early music I just had fifths as well, so it's kind of interesting uh, technique if you want to go that much into teaching. But anyway, let's carry on um, this one. Oh. I found that. Um, uh, for some reason, that rhythm there is. The one rhythm in the whole piece that trips anyone up. So just uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and one. Um, da, da, da. So just uh, that, I mean, you've got the demo there to, to listen to, so I hope it all helps. If they're not playing, they might want to just choreograph it. It's, it's up to you how you use it. I'll just go to the end of the guitar solo.
to this backing, um, you can either have students play the notes they know, like E and F and G, or you can use it as a chance to teach the G sharp, uh, which because they're nice long notes, um, I found that that was quite quite feasible in, in our group. Um, they, were, they were keen to do that. So it's another learning um, spot really to introduce G sharp. Um, fast forward a bit. And then we get to the last bit, which is our last coda. So um, well, it's not a lot, lot of fun, and Michael's also done a version that includes marimbas and ukuleles. So this time, strike blow this year, we're doing that as our massed piece. Um, so that's sort of you know if you've got a, a big group, uh, the, there's all those parts actually also available. Now just checks no question. You can't. Oh, oh, you can't hear me when the recording of the music's on. <laughs> oh, sorry. Thanks for letting me know. Thanks. Oops. Oh, all that stuff I said. Oh, sorry. Um, did you catch nothing of it? Oh well. Oh, all the all the teaching points. Never mind. <laughs> oh, um, thanks. Letting me know. <laughs> um, probably because I'm also facing the wrong way as well. Tune into the void. Journey into the Void is in seven time, um, but uh, I just think the notes are easy in the easy part. They're just uh, G, A, B, and C. Uh, so the, the teaching point is like it's in seven. I think it sits easily in seven when you when you hear it. The hard bit is probably conducting it for the teacher, but I've described down there um, how you know how to conduct it. Um, but I think having music like that uh, is good because students can go, oh, it doesn't have to be in full time. I want to write something. I want to write something in this time. You know, it kind of hopefully um, just exposes students to more ideas. But and also when it popped into my head, I couldn't help it. I was just like, oh, I have to include it. <laughs> this is um, so. I'm going to play a little bit. Um, dum bum. Bum 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 ba do 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 ba do 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 So it's kind of like that. I'm just going to play the G It's got a nice chorale bit in the middle, a complete contrast where it really brings out all the recorders. And someone that was visiting me thought it sounded like a gaming tune called Into the Void, Journey Into the Void, so that's why it's called that. <laughs>
So um, that's that one. So the third, I mean, I think it just sits in in there well. Without, it doesn't sound like it's kind of forced. It just that's how. It, um, uh, so that's. There's any questions about that one? Uh, the next one is in five, in five time. It's called Five for Dance. Uh, yeah, so and this one two parts to it and the top part of the melody so you've got the chance to teach that high C sharp um, using C sharp or C natural in that one um, and it's kind of like two dances so in section B it's like you've got one dancer there and you've got the other dancer there and then they come together there it's sort of like that was what I was kind of thinking then you've got this three four passage in here which builds on the rhythm from part of the ba da ba da ba ba. So you've got ba da ba da ba. So you just say so first three beats of the five four riff are repeated in three times as part of the build up, and then uh, along this bit here. Um, but the, and then you just got to watch out for the first time ba da ba da ba. You know, last time ba da ba da rest da. And you got so there's a sneaky rest in there for the uh, last time through. <laughs> it's just a, yeah, there's only a demo and a backing track for this one, because there are only two parts. Um, in the second part, you've noticed that I've got two notes written there. I prefer it if they can play the low D, but if your students aren't playing low D, um, you can play the G to keep it easier if you want to. And then you can see that there's a divisi, div stands for divisi, which means so that if you've got enough players, then they can just break into two parts there and help thicken up the chord and just help it build it up into more and more parts. Um, otherwise, just play the top part. Um, and then the end has got that little trick. Uh... So that's that one. Um, and then our final piece, 8 bit. Uh, I don't know if any of you have taught binary, uh, binary representation as part of the digital technologies. Um, but in the, it's in the curriculum, but if you have, then this will tie right on in with it. So this one, um, and it's it's based on 8-bit gaming music. Oh, I didn't realise that Kiwi was on top of the writing, never mind. Um, so, uh, so it's been engineered to sound more 8-bit, the backing, although the recorders are still you know, the same. Um, and it's also got the 8-bit coding in there so how that works is uh, this just look at here so there's, a, there's an easy part um, and of course in gaming music it loops right and it just builds up and you get more layers coming in you typically have a bit of a bass drop and then the bass comes in so um, all that happens in here so it's quite repetitive it's got a little counter melody here which again has all got a coding in it 
but so the easy parts honestly the ease will just work most of the way and then you've got this little breath so the easy part is easy and then the melody part so each bar is a code for a letter so if we take this bar here for an example the second bar all the low notes here that are um like e or d and haven't, haven't got accents are going to be a zero so if we filled in along here for each of those this is the second bar we're looking at a zero because it's low then another zero oh actually actually this one here is just the last the last five so um just yeah, start again so i'm uh, not that it really matters but so um this this little sheet here is because the first ones are all zero if you notice it zero 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 they all are and then the last five are the bits that are going to do the coding there are eight bits in here if you like which is another reason why it's called eight bits but the codes in the last five so if we go from the end here that's um got an accent and it's high so we're going to turn that on that's going to be a one the next one's backwards is a low and um so it, it's off it's a zero going backwards this one here is a high and it's um accented so it's on and then all the other ones here are off right so that makes sense so we just the last five five ones of each one one two three four five we're going to be going this one would be zero 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 one one you see and so the one we've just done there is um one zero one does that make sense okay, so um if they are if they've got accents say we do this bar here suppose when we do the whole bar it's going to be zero 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 these are all high with accents and they could be one 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 right so uh if they're high and accented they're a one right otherwise they're a zero then we put them into here and the last the last digit or note of the bar represents a one the second to last one represents a two and the third to last one represents a four notice how they keep doubling and an eight and a 16 all right so then all we have to do is add them up so in this bar here we had this one was a one and this one was a one so that means we had a four and we had a one so that adds up to five so what's the fifth letter of the alphabet e yeah so this bar here is actually the letter E. So each bar is actually a hidden letter. Is this making sense? No. Um, and you can see there's a link how to find more information on how to um, teach all this. But it's kind of cool because students can do it the other way around. They might want to write a composition that has their own secret message or their name in it, um, which is really fun. Uh, but this is a mess, something that they can decode. So this one here, for instance, we've only got ones at the end, haven't we? Bar three. And the rest are zeros. So that adds up to what? So a two and a one. So it adds up to three. So what letter is that? C. Yeah. So um, you can kind of see that um, you can... I just deliberately started on the second one. So... <laughs> But you'll get them to start with the bar one here, obviously, and then um, work through it. I just did it randomly so as not to sort of give it all away. <laughs> um, but, you know, do the first bar, second bar, third bar, and so on. There's only eight bars. Just a little activity uh, that they can do. Um, does that make sense? Got a few nods. Yeah, good, good, good. All right, and how it sounds
can hear it sort of building up with the bass and then it drops back a bit. And um, this is the version, if we go into the menu, backing play along, 8-bit score. There's also one there that you can actually uh, see all the... So that's that one, really. Um, yeah, so it's a, there's a few different versions of music here. Yeah, that's, I think that's everything. So um, let's go back onto the home page, the Mensa page. Uh, so at the moment, it's all downloadable PDFs and play along YouTube. Um, and we're just discussing, I think some people actually want to be able to buy hard copies of the book, of the booklet, so we're looking into that. Um, um, but if there's anything else that you need or you think's missing, um, I really appreciate hearing. I think it's when you, I'd like to hear from you in terms of your questions and thoughts at this point. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry you couldn't hear me when I was playing stuff. Um, um. Judith, I just want to say I think the resource is fabulous. Um, I I love the fact that it's derived in Aotearoa in our country. I think it's really special and um, very engaging. And there's definitely a couple of pieces that I want to try with my kids. We've only we've only got a fledgling recorder program at the moment, but I do have two hundred and fifty children who are beginners. <laughs> but I'm absolutely adamant that it's going to happen and. I just cannot wait for my year fours to have played for a year and to be able to navigate some of these pieces. I think it's really, really exciting. Um, and I'm sure everyone here feels the same way. Um, yeah, so so thank you because <laughs> I've been cobbling together all these sorts of learning progressions and I feel like there's this beautiful kind of sequence and it's great that all the notes are in chart form so you can have a look at it and you go oh yep okay the kids who can play E and D right we can you know differentiate for them because it's always a differentiation journey for me in my music classes so yeah I think it's fabulous. Oh that's that's great yeah that's what I always found too teaching intermediate there was always beginners and there's always someone that come from another instrument and was able to do a whole lot so uh, it's nice having some hard parts as well. Yeah, absolutely. And I love the fact that they're able to be printed out for kids to read because I think that they should be provided scores. Not not full scores necessarily, unless they want them, but, you know, like sheet music, it's part of the deal, isn't it? So, mm. yeah, fabulous. Oh, I think so. I look forward to hearing how you get on. Oh, <laughs> it's um, awesome. And slowly but surely slowly but surely it's improving but yeah no it's fun I love it I love the recorder yeah, it's good. yeah I've been surprised at which ones students have I um, mean enjoying like they enjoyed it, uh, Breezes Road Walls more than I um, anticipated um, I would have thought you know it might have been more upbeat one so it's, it's interesting and but probably different classes are different too depending on the dynamic of the group so um, yeah thanks um, could, other could I just also ask a question, um, and I probably missed this at the beginning of the meeting because my laptop crashed, so I do apologise for that, but um, what year levels are you using or have you used this repertoire with? Um, well, intermediate mm -hmm. tried, but also Heather Labodea tried them with younger kids, a lot younger actually, um, at, with Westburn. I can't remember how much younger they were. Oh, I'm not sure I've got on her feedback forms. Um, we had all the, uh, you know, kind of smiley face, kind of like feedbacky things. Mm. Oh, your age? No, nope, they were older kids. Oh, that was our school. I've got to find them. I'm sorry, I can get back to you on that. I'm actually... Oh, absolutely. Please do. Um, I, yeah, I'd really like to stay in contact, actually. So thank you. And I'll just stop now. <laughs> That's okay. But I mean, hopefully you'll be able to gauge with your students or try, uh, you know, the style of music and the piece and which notes and, um, all that, you know, it'd be, it'd be interesting to see. Um, I know it's just, <laughs> yeah. Any other questions or thoughts?
anything I can do to make it more accessible or anything like that? Or, um, or anything that I didn't explain very well? Or anything you thought I might have missed because I was explaining how to teach it while it was playing? <laughs> oh, a bit gutted about that. It's some of my best moments. <laughs> hmm. There's still a few minutes if you um, have questions, because whatever question you have, probably someone else has the same one. Oh, yeah, in the chat, uh, Kayleen is asking, um, just wondering, how does everyone sterilize their recorders after use? Yeah, that's a good question. Well, um, the, it, there's a, it is one at the moment, and I'm not taking recorder this year. Uh, Peter is, but she's got a spray that she puts on all of the recorders, a um, disinfectant spray thing. Um, and we, but at one stage we had wipes. Uh, and other times, you know, like if students have their own recorder, obviously that's great. And, and when we've got someone that's really committed, they definitely do have their own recorder. I think that's the best scenario. <laughs> but um, yeah, how do other people sterilize their recorders? Very good question. I've seen I've seen um, Celia mention putting them in some very uh, mild bleach and water. She, uh, somebody else had asked that question, and um, yeah, just a mild, very mild. Mm. Yeah, I've thrown mine through the dishwasher a few times. <laughs> <laughs> It's very hard though, <laughs> keeping all the bits together because I separate them all so that they get a good wash at um, Christmas. I see. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Any other questions? You're only supposed to be 10 in the resource, but they ended up to be 13, but, you know, hey. <laughs> I hope they're, um, yeah, I think hopefully there's something there for, for everyone, and, and um, I'm really happy for them to be used in, in different ways. I'm really also keen to hear how you use them. How do you, how will you use the Go Easy Blues, for instance? How will, you know, if you uh, think you've done something creative or different with it, I'm really, really keen to hear. Yeah. It's very quiet. I should have told you to bring your recorders. I realised that it was out of time when I was playing it, so I couldn't sort of count or conduct or play with it because it would have been out of time for you but, but you could have played along <laughs> anyone got any favorites have their own a oh, five four down oh cool thanks i think that was the first one i wrote you know thought of it, it Milton sterilizing solution and dishwasher. Yeah. Yeah. This all came about because, um, well, there was the opportunity to uh, apply to write resources, but there was a chat on Facebook and uh, Ali Caldwell, um, when one of her chats with teachers around New Zealand, there was a, just one, a one off comment that said, I wish there was something like this for recorders with play New Zealand with play along videos. And it's one of those things that, you know, I saw it and I went, oh, I could imagine writing stuff like that. It just all of a sudden, you know, it resonated. And um, that's all it took. And so then I put the proposal in, you know, would this be useful? If so, um, I'd love to do it. So um, it's amazing what one comment can do on Facebook. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, Um, Judith, uh, is your material going to be used in the strike strum? Is that what it's called? Strike strum blow? Yes, yeah, drum strike blow. Um, yes. yes, it is. So 
uh, when we were choosing the recorder repertoire, I was in the middle of writing it all. In fact, I'd just written it all, and it's like it was really hard to ch <laughs> to choose any recorder stuff that I hadn't just written. So I was like, oh, I have to do that one. So, um, uh, so all the recorder pieces are actually from here that we're doing in Strums Track Bow this year. We won't make it all mine in other years. It's just that it was timing. And the massed piece is the rock order. So um, the ones we're doing in Strum Strike Blow are um, Limpet and Barnacle Rock, Breezes Road, Trans Alpine, Alpine Blues, 8 bit, and um, then the rock, rock order massed. And then next year we'll pop another one in. We don't know which one yet. Yeah, one or two. <laughs> yeah. So that'll be, be fun to have everyone playing those together. Be amazing. Yeah. Are you sending them out to um the link out to all the schools in New Zealand, or or do you want us to tell each the schools that we're at about it, or how are you doing it? Uh, about the resource, do you mean, or trying to strike? Yeah. Um, no, 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 yeah, about your resource that you've made. Um. Well, Men's has been uh, advertising it, and. But honestly, um, you know, feel free to tell because it's one of those things. It doesn't matter what you do. There's always people that didn't hear, <laughs> um, especially I think in music teachers. Sometimes, well, they might even be a member of Mensa and not not somehow seen it. But it, hopefully, it's easy to spot on the Mensa site. Um, there's a link to it from the resources, which will take you to this page. Uh, which. What, what about the principals like who aren't in men's there? Like, you know, like if I tell the principal of a primary school. Yeah. About it. I mean, like, yeah, please. How do please. they find the link? Um, well, that that is the link there, you know, slash key recorder. But if you go to the main homepage of men's, um, and oh, that's the events at the top. But down below there's resources. Or actually, mine might be, here we go, he's a tab up here where it says resources I'm just going to click on resources this is how I think most people would find it and then um, it's it's there you can actually uh, supposing it's in a few years time and it's disappeared way down then you could click on either click on recorder down here as a topic it's down there and then it will come up as one of the only ones that's down there as recorder so it kind of will filter them well, there's also a search button, so I think you could probably just search for Key Recorder and it will come up with it. So this, right. yeah, so anyway, it's, that's a few ways to find it. Right. Um, I also you. found that that's all right. Um, I've, I've tried Googling it myself too and it came up pretty quickly because there's only one Key Recorder uh, thing. And oopsie, I can't spell when I'm, when I'm using my finger. <laughs> I'm just checking, checking the uh, men's website. Yeah, so that's well. You might get too many options actually, but yeah. So that's what the resource looks like. But then you click on the link in there to get to the page. And the reason I've done that is that the page has is full width, and I can get more information on there. So that that's why that's like that. So the resource um, thing is is a placeholder for it. But I, if you're going to send an email to a principal, I would send um, menza.co.nz slash kiwicorder, that one there. That's up to you, but thanks. Oh, what about that? Advertising Amazon. I've got no idea how that came up. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> All right. Hmm. Okay. Um, Amazon, how on earth that happen? Mine. Resources. This would be the slow way I'd get to it and go there and then click what on What was that email again? Menza.co. Uh, so here it is here. That that will take you to the actual resource page, the actual page where all the information is. Menza.co.nz forward slash key recorder. Mm. Thank you. Okay. Put that in the chat actually. Yeah. Put that in here. Hey. Judith, do you have to be um, a member of Mensa to 
uh, to access the page? Um, no, this is a good thing. It's um, fully funded by means of for anyone to use. At okay. any time. It's completely free. Uh, there is some stuff that you have to log in to see on the resources, but this is not one of them. That's all right. It's just that if I usually get the teacher, the class teacher, to use the computer while I'm teaching, and we have to use hers because mine don't connect to the screen at school, so she'll be able to do that. Absolutely. Anyone should be able to do it unless the website's down. <laughs> so, you know, I mean, you know, that's the only reason why you, you wouldn't be able to, ever, you know, if there was. Um, and then even so that the videos are on um, a channel, the key recorder channel, but the uh, but the PDFs are all here. So you, you do want to go to it from here because it's organized better here. Thank you. All right. Good questions. Any other questions or comments or suggestions? Uh, yes. Um, Judith, I do have one other question. Just about the um, the video resources. Did you were you involved in the production of that, or did you um, contract a company? Because they're they're very engaging. Oh, thank um, you. You know, I made did you them. set a brief for a company. No, I made them all myself. Oh my um, goodness! And which um, I vastly underestimated how much work it would be. To be mm. honest. Mm. Um, you know, so I thought I was like done with the resource, like, yeah, I've finished, I've just got to make the videos. <laughs> it took so long um, because there's so many versions of them. Yeah. And uh, But anyway, um, yeah, so I, I used a mix, well, I, I made the assets in Canva and then I put them into Final Cut Pro. Right. Uh, the, that's how I did them. And then, the, of course, um, graphics from the Sibelius scores that I created. But then they had to kind of be the right layout for the video. So mm -hmm. anyway, yeah, that's yeah, so that's how. Uh -huh. It feels like that in itself is a workshop that you could run um, for educators because you know we all know kids are so hardwired to be visual learners, um, which for us as music educators is a slight bonus because you know then they'll read notation whatever, um, but. I know that I don't have the skills to make videos like that, and I would like to build my skills. So I don't know if you're talking to Menza and you know a spin-off, <laughs> would I come? So anyway, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, and I've made some just in Canva, but um, it's easier to then put the slides into here and and um and do it. But you know, definitely, and I learned a lot in the process. I'd already learned about Final Cut Pro. I'd gone to one of Duncan. Ferguson's courses actually but the stuff I had to learn for this I was like you know searching YouTube for how to's sort of every mm. single day so um I did learn a lot <laughs> in the process oh, dear. but yeah um but you're right I think it's really helpful for students because then they can it's right itself um, learn themselves and also it helps the teachers because they can look at what the students are doing can't they while this is on yeah Peter. Anyway, anyway, thanks, thanks. <laughs> yeah, and that then there's certainly not. I wouldn't say everything's perfect at all, but there came a point where I just had to kind of su submit it. Oh, well, um, thanks, Judith. And that's a great idea for our workshop, Amelia. I think if Judith is keen, um, means I was definitely keen to support that. Um, yeah, we should uh, talk about it today <laughs> for um, doing that workshop. 
Um, but yeah, thank you all so much for attending and um, Judith for your wonderful resource. It's um, been a really awesome workshop and the music's just beautiful. Thank you so much. I really enjoyed writing it. I enjoyed it. I had heaps of fun, actually. I even went out and bought, and finally, I bought a lovely new recorder too to celebrate. Um, my my recorder own one wasn't worthy of recording, which is why we got Celia in, and she did a beautiful job recording. But I finally do have one now that sounds better than my other one that's all cracked and broken and <laughs> scratchy. But I loved writing the stuff, so yeah. Anyway, hope you can enjoy it. <laughs> students can benefit. Hmm.